that not only has something to give from the country, but something for the whole world as well. Somebody that's positive, influential, somebody that's really willing to do good and work with charities, somebody that won't stop or settle for less. And uh, I think one of the, the biggest factors is determination and perseverance, no matter how hard things get. Because as the, the facade of being a beauty queen might look glamorous, but there are a lot of hardships behind it, a lot of training, a lot of preparation, and uh, it's really that. It's really what's inside that makes a beauty queen. Okay. Uh, question. Uh, I actually you prepared for the for of your part was taking that on the back of it. Uh, but uh, tell us uh, what what is one thing that we don't know that make that, that will make you stand out. Really one thing. Well, I feel like my whole life's already been um, in the public eye. But if there's something that not everybody knows, is my willingness to help others. I really take that to heart. I don't ask for attention in that sense. When I get there, I want to be like an abbe. I want to be somebody that helps unconditionally. Something that, somebody that doesn't have to get attention because of all the good that she's doing. It's it's really something that I grew up believing in, that I believe in good karma, and I believe that you know, to be able to be a good person or to live a fulfilled life means really giving back to others and really being a good person. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Michelle, good afternoon. Uh, I'm a new year from Zoology. Um, I just want to know what inspires you from doing an advocacy that is related to autism. Uh, I have two autistic siblings, one older and one younger. And uh, I've mentioned this countless times in the past, but I did see firsthand the kind of struggles that they went through. The lack of inclusivity that we, we have here in our country, the lack of resources, the lack of, law, lack of laws that protect them. And it's because of them that this has really turned into a lifelong mission for me. It's not just for the budget, it's something that I can deal with all of my life. And I know I'm not the only person with these issues. And I believe that to be somebody to gain that kind of platform means gaining a voice that's listened to, gains attention, and I really believe that this issue needs more attention so that we can find a solution together. Thank you. In line with that, Michelle, um, would you like to personally acknowledge your friends from yes. Autism Society? Yes, the National Director of Autism Society Philippines is here, Ms. Barna. Would you like to say a few words? From the Autism Society Philippines. Um, well, we have been working with Michelle for some time and we really wish her well. Beyond the beauty, as it, she has really a good heart, and I think we should acknowledge that over and above everything else. She's been working with us trying to understand the advocacy and has shared also her aspirations. Uh, she, has, she has traveled on her own to different parts of the country so that she can uh, make a difference in the lives of children. She has visited our work sites for persons with autism actually work. So, napakalaki po ng commitment niya sa aming advocacy and we acknowledge that and we thank her for it. Uh, Michelle has the entire package. She is beauty and purpose. It's not just beauty with a sprinkling of purpose, but beauty and purpose. Thank you. For our next question. 
Hello, Michelle. We back up on the right. This is inside. Um, we, we, with your journey in this world, Philippines was, uh, like this world, Philippines has added up to the next world, has many challenges. And you have overcome them and overcome them. Now, uh, what for you is the biggest challenge that you face from then on when you miss your Philippines preparing for your journey in this world? Well, I've always said that preparation is the hardest part because when you go into this world and you travel to compete, you have to be the total package. It's not like here where you can kind of put it in between the activities. So training is the hardest part for me. But in terms of the pageant, I am most nervous about the head-to-head -head and beauty with the purpose um, segment of the competition because I am bringing my advocacy to the global stage and I feel like I have the most at stake because of that, because I really want to make a change. I really want to gain international attention on this issue to help my country and to help my kids, my siblings, not my kids. <laughs> my siblings, and everybody that's suffering with the same problem. So, you only had to a challenge. Thank you so much. Hi, Michelle. I'm Robert from Manila, Bolivia. First question, um, is your mom joining me? Yes, actually, um, my dad, my mom, my stepmom, my stepdad, along with my brother Abraham, my sister, um, her boyfriend, Kelly, and another friend. Actually, Miss Joy is also playing, along with Mama. <laughs> but, um, yes, my family members are coming to support me too. And I'm very, very, very grateful for that. And the same question, what is the advice of your mom in terms of uh, the relationship with the other candidates in this book? Any last minute question? Well, my mom's always believed that you should be yourself, you should be genuine, and she believes that the personality I have would be fit for the pageant. So it's, she never told me to be fake. I mean, that's a big no-no for me, because you are trying to be yourself and be awarded for being yourself. Um, of course, I've said this in Miss World Philippines, but she really emphasizes on staying true to who you are, because then the world will notice that and give credit for that. Um, in terms of other preparations, Naman, she has a lot of things to say about my walk, about, about you know, about my talent. You know, any anything a mom would normally do. She sees the things that other people normally doesn't see, but I really credit her. She's been at the top of the game supporting me. She's done everything she can to make sure that my souvenirs are in order, my wardrobe's at place. And she's been talking to countless designers to contribute to my wardrobe. So. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Bob. Actually, we really wanted Melanie to be here yes. this afternoon, but unfortunately, she yes. has a big thing. Hello. Hi, Melanie. Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Stand Greg and Michelle, Sir Arnold, good afternoon. Um, apart, from, apart from the head to head challenge and the beauty with a purpose segment of the competition, um, which, um, which other past up events are you preparing the most? Are you looking forward to participating for the show? Definitely sports. <laughs> um, that's what I focus on in this world because that is my strongest. Um, advantage because I've been playing sports all of my life ever since I can remember. So uh, other than that though maybe the top model because I have experience with that as well. But just to be able to win the sports challenge against 120 candidates, I feel like that would be a great accomplishment. It took so long to find me being an athlete. But I'm a professional athlete after that. <laughs> but I think sports challenge would definitely. Okay, my, my next question is, uh, 
you're one of the favorites uh, in the pageant this year. In fact, so many pageant admins and social media have been putting you as one of the strongest candidates this year. Now, part of the now part of the now part of the Miss World competition is upping your social media game. So. I would just like to ask you, how would you encourage Filipino fans to support you by voting for you in Mod Star Nonstop, despite the awkward perception between Filipino fans and this world fashion? Well, I think the Filipinos love this world man. It's just, you know, there are a lot of differences compared to the other pageants. And actually, that's one of the reasons why I chose this world, because of those values. But to answer your question, on my end, I've done everything I can to make sure that I promote Mobstar. I've seeked help with other media outlets, other celebrity friends, and it's really just up to the Filipino people if they want to help me win the multimedia fast track challenge because that's where it's included. And I really do hope that the Philippines and the other are mentioned like that come together and to support that because if I do win the multimedia fast track challenge or any fast track challenge alone it really helps for my standing or my my <laughs> for my desire to be um Miss World. But you know I just I, I really hope that we can we can help each other, we can support the country, we can come together and and really prove to the world that we in the Philippines are a magic powerhouse. And that's one of the ways that we can show that. Can you make an additional opinion about the pageant fans voting and they so make up in the small organization? Um, the, the fans should think that the baseball organization <laughs> is the only organization, pageant organization, who helps a lot of different charities in the Philippines. So that they have to think about that. That think about that's a competition, so it's a reality show. So it's not the fault of the organization. Whatever the choices of the judges. But this is the only organization that helps a lot. You check the GH who has the building for the child for the children with cancer. Children with cancer, that's the Miss World organization. Charity. Yeah. During the time of calamities, who, who, who what pageant organization helping you? It's this one organization. You go to your mga children, my uh, father, that's every year. Do you know how many thousands of dollars are being paid in this one organization? And that charity. That's good things at home now. So you have to be, but we are not, we are not open. Because this is health. We don't have to announce it. And how many step children in a particular program this world organization? How many scholars? But they are not open. But this organization helping a lot, a lot of charities in our country because they have been back. They have so much passion and they like the people because they are budget lovers. That's why they're very focused in Asia. They focus more on the Philippines. So I think they have to think many, many times before they give a negative, you know, outlook about the Miss World Organization. So think how this organization helps the Philippines. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so that's help. So that's why I'm asking you are people, you are the number one machine machinery to, to communicate to these pageant fans are the media. So thank to Muno. Kung tulungan nyo kami up to what extent na. But who can help to spread the good words of this world? The charity, the beauty with the purpose of the Miss World organization are the people. So that's all. I hope this time they will not say anything about the negativity. So we're trying my best, I'm trying my best to set the best candidate of ours. So when it comes to international public, I was one of the judges for Mount But 
I'm not the only one. Uh, among the judges, there are a lot of judges from different countries. So that would be the choice to get to end. So what I'm going to ask you, because I saw it. I saw the competition. I saw how the people judge. They yeah, make more judges. So there is no such thing as, I don't know. I hope this time, but clear the issue. I just want to clear this issue about the negative in the community. It doesn't help to do the kind of thing. It won't help. But this, no matter what the people say about the organization, they still continue giving work and giving work and giving charity to all the under underprivileged people. Thank you. Um, it's not just about finding the prettiest in the world. It's definitely not just about who can sport the swimsuit the best or who can sport the best long now. It's really about seeing what's inside and what we can have to offer to the world because you don't need to wear the best swimsuit to help charities. And that is, Miss World has been advocating for charities. I've been doing so much good. I met with Megan earlier and I asked her about her experience um, when she won. And she did a lot of charity work. She traveled, she would be gone two months at a time straight, come back here for two weeks and leave again just doing charities. And that's the kind of qualities that they're looking for in a girl. Somebody who actually wants to do good, but somebody who doesn't dream to be plastered on every billboard, but somebody who wants to be remembered by the underprivileged or people that need help. Somebody who can be an inspiration, a voice, a helping hand. And again, we don't need swimsuits for that. And we don't need the best grounds for that. But I am very honored to be sporting Francis with your court for Miss World. I love you, Francis. You made a wonderful round for me. But again, I do believe that pageantry is changing. So just to touch on the negativity, let's not let's not, you know, put bad light on the performances of Miss World because there's a reason why they're different pageants. There's a reason why there's a reason why they have different motos because they believe in different things. So let's just give respect to Miss World and the Miss World Philippines organization and just appreciate the kind of work that we're trying to do. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, um, we played around the concept of it being the pearl of the Orient series. So it is going to be a shade of secret of a shade of blue. Pero it, it's very lovely, the details, it's exquisite. When I tried walking on it, it, it was very flowy, very elegant, and I'm pretty sure it'll take a lot of, it'll turn a lot of heads when I reach the international stage. I'm very, very lucky to be one of Liberian's babies. He takes care of me so much. And just uh, since we're on this topic, he is also designing my national costume. It's very lovely, it's gold, cool. it's for dances of the world, but, so. Are you bringing an um, all Filipino wardrobe to the fashion? Yes, of course, of course. Um, countless, countless designers have been contributing to my wardrobe. Mga Palmas, Renee Sabir, Francis Devere again, Chris Nick, just countless of designers have reached out and have offered to contribute. So I have pieces that are woven from Pinya fabric. Um, I forgot how to pronounce the other fabrics, but um, yeah, the abaca fabrics, but there was another one. I will go back to on that. But it is an all Filipino wardrobe. I'm very proud to say that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Michelle. Good afternoon. So my question is, before joining Miss World Philippines, everybody knew you as a model and an enforcer of bench. So when you joined, a lot of people were very dismissive because you're an enforcer of bench. But right now, do you feel that you have um, 
proven your worth and then do you also feel that the Filipino pageant fans are now warming up to the idea of really supporting you to get that second this role? Well, I definitely hope so. I've been nothing but giving my best, my 200% of myself, efforts for the training, and to ensuring that I can make all of you guys proud. On, on the bench issue, I, the thing about me is I never really take negativity into account. I try to avoid that as much as possible. Everybody always has something bad to say, or either good or bad. And it's not good for me or anyone's mental state to focus on that because everybody has something beautiful to offer. And that's what I hope the Filipino can focus on as well because nobody's perfect. But we all try to be, we all try to do good. And that's something that I've always aspired to be. Somebody that can positively influence other people. And you know, I trust my team. I trust the training that I've gotten. I trust the feedback of my closest confidants or my mentors. And you know, I've improved so much since Miss World Philippines. And I hope that shows on the global stage. And I hope I make all of the Filipinos proud. Thank you so much. And you know, just to add, because you know, we're on social media, it's real time. Um, I just want to let you know that. Yes, um, more and more fashion fans are really supporting you. Thank you so much. So, in Philippines, good luck to you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hi. Um, hi. Ah, I'm Jason Francisco from the Topic Fashion. Um, we talked uh, during your press presentation when you were still a uh, candidate, and then we said that you know, we believe that you will be winning Miss World Philippines. Um, I was just informed that uh, you will be the third Miss Philippines of Miss World Philippines that's going to be dressed by um, Francis Libina. The first two are Megan Young and Katrina Gray. Katrina. Oh, Katrina. Okay, so I said Katrina. So, what will be your um, the strategy that you will be using? Because it's the same um, thing that we see every year with regards to the Miss Philippines that. Uh, uh, the, the sports, um, the, the sports events, and the beauty departments. What will we make you stand out? And then uh, the second, the second part of the question is talking about passport. Well, <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, talking about we do in the purpose of passport pass the requirements. <laughs> I can assure you that all of my legal documents are in place naman and I won't run into any issues when I get to London. So that's, you don't have to worry about that. Um, my beauty with a purpose, I feel like it's really solid. I, I feel like it's time for us to take notice on the issue. It's something that I believe in and, I'm, and it's something that I've really been fighting for. I know that there is a lot of things to improve on here in the Philippines as compared to other first world countries where they really take into consideration the welfare of individuals on the spectrum. I've been working very closely with Ms. Mona, making conversations. We're very excited for future plans. Actually, at, right after this press call, Tito Arnold and I are going to a meeting to, uh, to talk about the campaign that we're doing for, for Autism Society Philippines and I feel like it's it's really strong and it's 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 something that Miss World and something that Miss World Philippines can really give importance to, share the global stage to and uh, I, I believe in it so much. It's, it's been a lifelong mission for me and I've been fighting for it all of my life. Fighting with it, my my brother can actually talk about it also. But it's something that I I don't I'm be crying in a month. No, but it's it's something that's very close to my heart. Um, and it would be wonderful if I did with the beauty with the purpose because 
it's a, it's really it's really time for us to shed light on the issue. And to answer your first question, how what do you think will make me stand out? Well, I am showcasing myself, and uh, I am showing the best parts of myself as well as the ugly parts. I am an open book. I don't hide anything, but I don't, I can't really talk about the other candidates because I haven't met them. But all I can say is that I will be doing my best. We are a pageant powerhouse country, and our training for for pageantry is, the, if not the best, one of the best, or if not the best in the world. So the people behind me really know what they're talking about. They really take into account what's good and what's bad. Unlike some of the other countries who don't really um, give this much exposure to pageantry. So I believe in my team, I wouldn't be where I am right now without the support system that I have. I have aces and queens, I have my mom and cousin. I have all of these beautiful sisters that help me through. Very talented, very supportive. I have the Miss World Philippines organization, Mamaru, Tito Arnold, just backing me up. And I feel like it's not just me that's standing on stage, but the whole Philippines. And I really hope to make you guys proud because I will be raising my flag high and proud when I get to London. So I hope that really exhumes some pride into all of you. So thank you for There's a lot more. I Well, they invited me. Pang this type of I just want to relax and I just want to watch. Okay. Best of luck, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Okay. Um, two things. My first question is, well, a while ago, I think you've been, you've already shared what your mom has already told you what to do and not to do. But there's, is there any funny in between your trainings? Is there anything that she would always comment about you, whether it's your walk or whether it's your clothes or whether you're taking too much time, things like that, in your preparations? Well, my mom, she's such a character. <laughs> my, we would be arguing one minute and then best friends the next minute. How is any other mother-daughter relationship I as well? But she always, criticizes my walk, if anything. <laughs> um, she would much rather have me be more, uh, I guess, elegance is not the term, but she wants me to make ballet my, my waist a little bit more in terms of my walk. My wardrobe, she really believes in my wardrobe being the man. So, and she believes that I can carry whatever I wear. So she's very confident in that aspect. My mom doesn't really train me for Q&A no man. <laughs> I do have aces and queens to help me with that. I have people mad. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, what would it be fun? Yeah, would it be fun to have your own and your Michelle moments? Michelle moments though. I will definitely have my Michelle moments, but probably not in that way. Okay. In um, different aspects of the pageant. <laughs> Um, all right. Um, last is actually, you know, everybody has seen you grow, and all of these ladies have grown in the past few weeks and months. So, how would you describe the, the, your ultimate transformation? Because I think you've been saying in various interviews that months ago I wasn't, I didn't know how to walk, I didn't know how to talk like this, but now, how would you describe the new Michelle Mich that's in front of all of us? Well, pageantry is very different from my professions before, from modeling to acting. But I can honestly say that, you know, I really believe that everything happens in God's perfect time. Because if I try to assess my performance, and let's say I put myself three years ago and I joined then, I don't think I would have excelled the way I did today because all of those parts of my career helped me become this Michelle. Or being an, or an artista helped me be in front of people and just claiming, not claiming, but 
really just accepting all of the criticisms that surround me. And I know that's very, very prominent being a beauty queen. Modeling helped me project. And I feel like the biggest transformation is really just, you know, the pasarela, the way I carry the way I carry myself, the way I answer questions. I'm more re regal now because of the pageant training. I'm more polished. I'm very, I'm better at public speaking, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and I really have the support system behind me to thank for that because, again, I wouldn't be where I am now without them. It isn't a one-man thing, there is no I in team. I give all of my credit to my support system. If I could fly everyone to London, I definitely would. But, mahal eh. Medyo mahal. Ito <laughs> Pero, the biggest transformation is definitely that. And I have my support system to thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lydia. And we wish we had more time to accommodate everyone's questions. But you can still reserve close for later during your one on one questions with Michelle. As you wrap our as you wrap up our QA segment, let's oblige your guests with some photo ops. Michelle, solo photo first. You want to you want to give a message? 